Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Esme and I'm a producer for the How To Academy. Joining us today is Kai Fu Li, having previously served as president of Google China and senior executive at Microsoft and Apple, Dr. Li is now CEO of Synovation Ventures. Dr. Li is also the New York Times best-selling author of AI Superpowers and is co-chair of the Artificial Intelligence Council. He joins us today to celebrate the release of his new book, A Venture Into Fiction with the novelist Chen Chi Fan, AI 2041. Dr. Lee will be drawing on his expertise in artificial intelligence and sharing with us a vision for the future, showing us how life will transform with the growth of artificial intelligence. So Kai Fu Lee will speak for around 45 minutes and then it'll be over to you to ask questions. So please send any thoughts and queries via the Q&A box and we'll try and get through as many as we can. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Kai Fu Lee. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have a chance to talk to the How To Academy. Uh, this is my new book, AI 2041, and it is a tutorial on AI, except that it is uh, delivered through stories. So there are 10 stories and follow each story, our explanation of technology and their implications. But for this talk, because I'm not much of a storyteller, uh, as my co-author, uh, Chen Xiufan, wrote the, 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 the stories himself, uh, I want to focus more on the technology implications. In this book, there are about 20 technology areas. So for this talk today, I'm going to pick, uh, I have picked about six of them. Um, I need to uh, be enabled screen sharing, or are you going to uh, share, play for me? So you should I'm, be able to share your screen now. Okay, great. I'm going to share my screen and um, use my slides, which is um, a little bit different from the format of the book, as I mentioned. It's going to be much more focused on the uh, technology part. So uh, how AI will transform the world. We've all seen headlines about AI beating people in terms of uh, game playing, read radiology, pathology, uh, protein folding, and all kinds of challenges. So all of this is progress that's been made on a technology called deep learning. And the way deep learning works is very different from our human brains. <clears throat> deep learning does not think through the hows and whys, the analytical and the deductions, but rather it takes a huge amount of data to decide for itself what the right outcome or prediction or decision should be. And the humans pose the problem and to let the AI decide. For example, we could feed in all kinds of data about someone applying for a loan and then teach AI, these are the profiles of people who returned their loan. These are the people who defaulted on the loan and AI will deduce what aspects of their data causes the default versus uh, properly returning the loan and draws a very complex surface in a thousand plus dimensional space that cuts across the, all the users and says people on this site are good to give loan to, those sites too risky, likelihood of default. And this is the algorithm used by Facebook and Google and YouTube to show you content that targets specifically, uh, it asks the question of all the people who've seen all these videos and whether they liked it or not, based on clicking, watching, uh, closing window, et cetera, uh, which people liked it and which people didn't. And then ask the question further, are you the, 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 the person who um, has these be behaviors, are you more like the set of people who like this video or not? And it asks that for all the videos and shows you the video for which you're most likely to respond by clicking or watching. So this has the impact of first, when you have a huge amount of data, it gets smart. And the more the data, the smarter it gets. Secondly, it mathematically optimizes over thousands of dimensions, which people cannot do. And thirdly, it reasons individualistically. So the feed that you get on TikTok is very different from the feed I would get because we're different people, we have different behaviors and static software written to be one size fit all could not do that individualization, which is ever so powerful. 
However, despite these three strengths, AI has no ability to abstract, analyze, has no common sense and, and makes no real insight. It is just data in and decision out. Um, and of course, AI has no true creativity in coming up with something that the human hasn't told it to optimize. It doesn't know why it's optimizing, how it knows how to optimize. It doesn't know why it's optimizing. It doesn't know how to change or whether to change to optimize something else. And of course, AI doesn't have self-awareness uh, or emotions. So it is in some sense, extremely different from the human brain. It's also highly symbiotic with the human brain because we're good at things AI is not good at and vice versa. So hopefully that gives you a good um, background on what um, AI is. And in order for this AI to work, we need um, massive data and very accurate labeling in a fixed domain, not infinite domain, with a lot of computation power and some AI experts. When you have these five elements, magic will happen and AI will beat people's performance and dramatically outperform as more data is thrown at it. Uh, AI is not over just one industry, but it will disrupt all industries it, because all industries have data, different kinds of data. Uh, for example, in wave one, the easiest is internet data because there's the most data on the internet and it's directly connected to an outcome. Uh, on Am Amazon knows whether you bought or not. YouTube knows whether you watched or not. And that becomes feedback to train the AI and essentially turn AI and data and users into a money printing machine for the internet companies. And it's no wonder that the internet companies are currently also the most powerful AI companies with the most AI scientists and engineers. For wave two, you could ask who else has data? Well, all the financial companies clearly have data because they have to keep it for record keeping. And so banks, insurance companies, investment firms, so they can now use that data, not just for archive purposes, but turn it into a money printing machine. So banks can use AI to determine to, for whom to give loans. Insurance companies can recompute premiums um, and investment companies can decide what stocks to buy, which ones are likely to go up. And, and of course, there's a whole set of companies, you know, governments have a lot of data, uh, your tax data, um, utilities data, traffic data, car ownership data, and all that data can be turned into value. Uh, hospitals have medical data. Uh, there's data in logistics supply chain. There's data in the back office. Uh, company, now that COVID is causing people to work from home, uh, people's working patterns become data and that can be analyzed and potentially uh, having uh, works, work and tasks outsourced now that um, your work is being tracked digitally. And then wave three is called perception AI. And that is data that maybe didn't exist before, but we were now able to capture. It. These are perceptual data, data captured that are, that are analog in nature, usually not captured, but we can now capture it. So this could be speech data, um, could be capturing our microphones in open environments or this environment could be uh, a Zoom session. Uh, it could also be uh, camera data for images and videos. And, and AI is already beating people in terms of image recognition and speech recognition. And this can be easily extended because uh, we're limited on our senses. We only have you know, five senses really, and two of them uh, matter the most that of uh, vision and speech, but AI can have many, many senses. It can detect uh, temperature, humidity. It can uh, reconstruct 3D even in, in the dark. So AI will way exceed human in perception AI because of all these extra sensory capabilities that it has. Finally, way four is a little more difficult for AI today, but rapid progress is being made. Uh, in terms of being able to move and manipulate. Of course, moving doesn't mean it has legs. It could be wheels. And manipulate doesn't have to be five fingers. It could be whatever a construct that works. So once uh, AI can move and uh, manipulate, uh, that's like our legs and 
feet and uh, arms and fingers, uh, then it can really do everything that we can do. Uh, so typical uses are autonomous vehicles, robotics, and so on. So these are four waves of AI that are, have been progressing in parallel, uh, reinforcing each other and creating valuable companies. You've probably encountered each type of these AIs uh, for waves one and two. You probably encountered it, but just didn't know it. For waves three and four, it's a lot more obvious, but it is really happening all around us. And because AI works better with more data, and in every domain, more and more data is being gathered. So it's uh, not unexpected that it's coming to real uh, world applications very soon. So for the next part of my talk, I'm going to move to uh, what's next. So in, in my book, AI 2041, I talk about a number of new trends. So here I pick six of the many trends I predict as an extrapolation uh, of what I've spoken about so far. I've talked so far about what AI can do to date. And now I'm gonna talk about AI going forward up to 20 years. Uh, the first one is going to be understanding of language. And once you understand language, you can play a big role in businesses. And, and interestingly, uh, computers were able to see first and then learn language later. Uh, perhaps seeing is easier, just like babies learn to see first before they learn to uh, understand and talk and listen. Um, I think on, on the surface, uh, computers, AI really began to see well in 2014. That was when uh, AI uh, beat human performance in an image recognition task. And that's on the top illustrated here. And the um, theory here is that when AI beats people uh, on a fundamental task, that of seeing and recognizing, then applications should blossom. And indeed it has. So that has turned into a lot of applications, uh, including some controversial ones like uh, facial recognition, uh, but also using uh, recognition for uh, autonomous stores, use the recognition in factory visual inspection, the use of vision in various types of robots, uh, and the use of computer vision in autonomous vehicles. Uh, also, it can be used offline, not with live uh, item, objects, but it can be used to do photo editing, smart, uh, you've probably noticed uh, a lot of photo editing and video editing software improved, it's because of AI. The fact, in fact, when you use an Apple uh, iPhone and do a portrait mode picture, it is in fact using computer vision. It's recognizing you and, and then cutting you out, putting in the foreground, blurring the background and painting it behind you. And that requires computer vision to do that accurately and naturally. And of course it can be used to do bad things like uh, deep fakes are also based on computer vision technologies. So uh, as an investor, which is my daytime job, um, uh, we saw the 2014 breakthrough and we decided, hey, we're going to really make a bet on computer vision taking off with all these applications. And that has led to a lot of successful investments for us. But what has happened is that in 2020, history repeated itself as AI beat humans in terms of uh, reading comprehension. And that's a pretty tough task. That is asking an AI algorithm to read any passage and then, uh, and then be asked any question and is able to give you an answer. That's a pretty hard, tough task. And believe it or not, uh, as of last year, AI is, has beaten human. So once that is done, that can become the basis for a much higher accurate accuracy in speech recognition, machine translation, which are products that exist today, but they'll work so much better. They'll be, uh, they might be below acceptability threshold today, but they'll be above acceptability soon. And it can be used in question answering. You can ask um, all kinds of questions. In fact, Google already has pretty accurate question answering capabilities embedded in the search. I bet you probably just haven't asked the question. So to understand the power of this natural language, try asking a full question to Google next time. 
uh, it can also be used in targeted advertising. Imagine uh, if it, today uh, a typical commercial generates one single um, message to try to brand or sell your product. Maybe in different magazines, it would use different messages to cater to the audience, but always just in a few categories of main customer audience. But when you have this natural language ability, imagine if you can synthesize an answer, then what if we ask the question, what do I say to Kai Fu to get him to want to buy the new Tesla? Well, that answer may be a really good advertising slogan because maybe it will target me in terms of uh, maybe I admire Elon Musk, maybe I like big pads in cars, maybe I want fast zero to 60, maybe I want very cool doors that open like this, and it knows enough about me that it can um, advertise specifically targeting each person. And finally, you can have a very smart search engine that's not just giving you a bunch of websites, but gives you the answer that you want. So this is a great chance, I think, going forward, becoming the foundation because understanding language is very key to our communication with each other. And it's how we encapsulate uh, knowledge. So once you have that, uh, we can imagine building a system that has a huge foundation that is trained on a, on a gigantic language model that is our understanding of the whole English language, kind of like how kids first learn the English language then they can layer on top of that uh, the ability to learn uh, chemistry, uh, arithmetic, and any subject. So now we've, we, we have this capability in natural language to build a very large foundation that first understands English and then tweak it for specific domains. And once we have that, uh, we can elevate ourselves from just having big data and uh, to move towards a smart business intelligence. And, and these can be business processes and decision-making that's powered by AI, assisting CEOs make really uh, big decisions. So when you make a big decision, let's say at a knowledge or insight level, uh, if you're in a question answering mode, you might ask the system, if Suez Canal is clogged for another two weeks, what stocks should I buy and sell from my portfolio? Uh, that's a question you would typically ask a analyst, but now AI can answer the question. And also, it might gain enough insight to directly push to you to say, hey, Kaifu, have you thought about investing in this kind of company because of that event? So it's not, it's even better than a search engine. It um, suggests to you and reminds you without you ever asking it anything. Uh, there's a lot of details here that I won't go into, but I've mentioned some key applications, and this is something one of the companies we invested in has built, that this foundational model can make a very accurate machine translation if you know what domain it's in. In the middle one, you see copywriting, the example I gave you about how to sell a Tesla to Kaifu or to anyone uh, in a targeted individualistic market copywriting for that person knowing what you know about that person. Um, and then on, on, the, uh, uh, on the last part are more of um, a financial engine in which you can uh, really understand what's happening uh, around the world and, uh, and ask questions and get uh, up to minute updated answers. The example I gave about Suez Canal. So I think-